We are go for launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the NASA Social for the Mars 2020 mission. The countdown is on. And then one day we're going to send humans to Mars, and and she might be one of them that is doing, uh, you know, biological research on the, on the surface of another planet. I'll let her talk about some of the exciting things regarding our first mission that is in fact astrobiology. It's you know a really exciting time to be part of the astronaut office, but it's also a really exciting time to be a biologist who's interested in space. I mean, I am an Earth biologist for now, but I can think of maybe no more profound question than the question of whether there's life on another planet, whether there ever was, how did it originate? And you know, this, when it touches down, is going to be the best scientist we've ever sent to the planet to answer exactly those questions. My seven-year-old aspires to be one of your future Mars colonists. She's curious how you foresee your expectations of human exploration and astronaut training to change as we move ahead. Will there be more desirable skills for the Mars exploration missions that she can concentrate on now? So Zena, you want to take a stab at that one first? So yeah. how do you think astronaut training will evolve? Sure, well, I think one of the most important things as we're going farther and farther afield is learning how to work in space for a long time. And with that in mind, you know, if you look at the newest astronaut class, my class, the Turtles, we come <laughs> from so many different backgrounds. You know, we have everyone from military pilots to microbiologists like myself. We have engineers, we have geoscientists. Uh, so there's no single path to becoming an astronaut. But the one thing that we all have in common is we loved working in teams and, you know, being able to collaborate and work together when you are stuck in, in a vehicle, you know, far away from your home planet for a long time is really Really important so whatever you do just follow your passion but you know be able to work with people and collaborate every astronaut class gets a nickname and you just said yours was the turtles are those all inside stories or is that something that you can share with us briefly yeah so the tradition <laughs> is that the previous class names the incoming class and uh, the inspiration for ours was actually at our class announcement and vice president Pence was there he told an anecdote from his childhood uh, an idiom where you know if you if you see a turtle on a fence post you know he didn't get there alone and the you know the sentiment behind this is that uh, anyone that you see on this stage today didn't get there alone it's thanks to the family members the mentors the teachers everyone who worked hard to help us get there and so it was with that in mind that we were named the turtles thank you hello
Terminal minus seven minutes. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Electrical systems. Airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. GCQ. Go. Operation support. Go. Com. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red eye monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. DLA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Knowledge. Go. Range coordinator. Go. Proceed. Launch director. LDS go and you have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC, verify T0 is set for 1150 zone. Four. Engine ignition, two, one, zero. And liftoff as the countdown to Mars continues. Perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. And we have successful separation of Mars 2020 with the Perseverance rover. Lori, let's get to you now. You've got uh, something a little fun planned for us, right? I do have something a little special for folks today. Um, we are, of course, with this mission, taking the whole world with us on, uh, on our way to Mars. And, and as part of that, uh, we ran a campaign with JPL uh, to invite the world to help us with the countdown to Mars. And so uh, what I'd like to do is, is share that uh, a little short video uh, that uh, we've put together uh, with uh, the help of uh, folks all around the world. Great, Lori. Great. Really enjoyed seeing all those uh, kids from around the world uh, helping out and contributing uh, some of their creative uh, genius. Lots in the papers today about uh, two astronauts called Bob and Doug who were on a SpaceX mission, that's Elon Musk company, and they splashed down over the weekend. It says, Houston, we have splashed down. This is in the mail today. Astronauts in Musk's space capsule make NASA's first watery landing for 45 years. They descended from four parachutes that slowed down their capsule from 350 miles an hour right down to 15 miles an hour. That's massive. This off the back of NASA, who launched its Perseverance rover bound for Mars last week. The rover is the largest, heaviest, most sophisticated vehicle NASA will have ever sent to Mars. It also will attempt to fly the first helicopter on another planet. Anna Ujjals from the National Space Centre in Leicester, and she told A.D. Damon about the significance of this 
to Leicester. This is the beginning of what could be huge for European space science and also for Leicester space science. When, when you look at what we do in Leicester, the University of Leicester is a powerhouse of global space science. Um, it's one of this country's best kept secrets. Um, and so no matter what discoveries are made by Perseverance, Leicester academics, my colleagues, Leicester students are going to be involved, which means that Leicester's people are going to be first to know about it as well. Seven-year-old Liz from Leicester was watching and she hopes that one day she will get to be an astronaut. She even got to put her question to the NASA scientists last week. My seven-year-old aspires to be one of your future Mars colonists. She's curious how you perceive your expectations of human exploration and astronaut training to change as we move ahead. Will there be more desirable skills for the Mars exploration missions that she can concentrate on now? So Zena, you want to take a stab at that one first? So how do you think astronaut training will evolve? Sure, well, I think one of the most important things as we're going farther and farther afield is learning how to work in space for a long time. And with that in mind, you know, if you look at the newest astronaut class, my class, the Turtles, we come from so many different backgrounds. You know, we have everyone from military pilots to microbiologists like myself. We have engineers, we have geoscientists. Uh, so there's no single path to becoming an astronaut. But the one thing that we all have in common is we love working in teams and, you know, being able to collaborate and work together when you are stuck in, in a vehicle, you know, far away from your home planet for a long time is really really important. So whatever you do, just follow your passion, but, you know, be able to work with people and collaborate. Oh, that is so cool. Liz and I'm Jennifer, join me now. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, seriously, what a question from your from your daughter to ask to the astronauts there. I mean, how, oh, we're so proud, honestly. She's been so inspirational to us. This has been such a huge um, event for her. And certainly um, the Falcon 9 launch in uh, the end of May was so so much of a catalyst for her space learning and really inspired her to take an interest in um, science and we're actually doing a uh, an experiment right now in her home learning lab where she's making Mars sand. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, she's here now. Wow. Mixing so it up. So I remember when I was a kid, I was infatuated by radio. I was always in my bedroom making tapes and I was taping the radio and I was listening to DJs. I was having a go myself and I was, I was absolutely besotted with it, which is why I ended up working in the field. What's, what's she like as a seven-year-old? Oh, she's just extraordinary, honestly. Um, Elizabeth actually has autism. She's a student at Westgate School in Leicester. And um, I mean, just uh, this has been such a, a catalyst for her development. I mean, 12 months ago... Elizabeth really wasn't speaking very much, and um, we had this lockdown, which kind of made it difficult to further her education school-wise. But then we've had this um, whole SpaceX, NASA, um, Bob and Doug launch thing happen. Um, Elizabeth was hugely excited about that. We ended up having a picnic in our front garden, and we were um, watching to see if the Dragon capsule was going to pass over our house after launch, because oh, we knew really? it was flying over the UK. And we couldn't see it because it was too bright, but we thought, oh, well, we'll come back out again um, later in the night. We'll wait for the International Space Station to pass over, and we'll kind of try again. And Elizabeth was really, really tired, but she but she tossed it out. And sure enough, there goes the International Space Station, and two minutes later, there go Bob and Doug. <laughs> so you, you actually so saw it? We actually saw it, and we took a not super great video of it, but um, still enough for us to kind of be able to say there. We saw it. There it is. And Elizabeth was just completely blown away by it. Um, she was up the whole rest of the night, couldn't sleep. Bob and Doug, you know, she was all excited. Oh, um, bless, but then bless her. This, this was just the start of something amazing for her. She's been talking so much about space and learning so much about astronauts. We have some incredible um, resources at home now. We actually turned her... Um, home learning space that we were using during lockdown into um, Astro Liz's Mission Control Center, which um, is where we sit and we watch all of our space updates. And Elizabeth was inspired actually to start a YouTube channel, um, which is called Astro Liz's Lab, where we talk about um, space topics and what's happening and we view our um, experiments. I've seen it. It looks great. It looks, yeah, it looks you. great. No, I, I think, it, and it sounds like the coolest lockdown uh, that I've heard for, for quite some time. It has to be said, Jennifer. Well, please uh, pass on our love to Liz and what she's doing in the space world. And it's lovely to hear your story this morning on BBC Radio Leicester.